All right, so in this video, we're going to learn more about uniform solids and uh, prisms in particular. Now, why am I, why have I written them separately? That is something that I will explain later on. And uh, uh, you should remember that while every prism is a uniform solid, not every uniform solid is a prism. And like I said, this is something that I will explain later on. Okay. However, the formula for calculating their volume remains the same, and that is uh, area of cross section. This is something that I will teach you shortly, multiplied by the height. Now, what exactly is the cross section? Okay, so here's what I have. To, what you have to do, this right here, you can see, is a triangular prism. Now, here's what uh, here's what I want you to, you to visualize a cross section as. Think of it as it's made out of bread. Okay, and let's say you had to take a knife and you start slicing it. So every time you slice this prism, you will get one same shape and that same shape is going to be a triangle, right? So therefore, its cross section is going to be triangular, which is why this prism will be called a triangular based prism. Now remember, when we say triangular base, that doesn't necessarily mean that its base is going to be triangular, okay? It can be resting on a rectangular base. It can, be, it can be resting on a rectangular face, but that doesn't mean that its name is going to change. The name is decided by its cross section. So since its cross section is triangular, this is going to be called a triangular prism or, or a triangular based prism. So suppose you have a pentagonal based prism. So this right here, you can see since its cross section is going to be pentagonal in shape, that is why we're calling it a pentagonal prism. Let me show you further what I mean. Okay, so now with the help of a couple of examples, we're going to understand how, uh, what exactly is a cross section and what exactly is a height and how the volume of any prism can be calculated. So right in front of me, I have a right triangular prism. Now this prism can sometimes also be referred to as a triangular based prism. And what is the reason behind that? The reason behind that is its cross section, we can see, is triangular in shape. Okay, so now let's first understand what a cross section here is going to be. So the cross section is going to be this shape that we have at the top or this right angle triangle. So let me highlight this for you. So you can see that this right here is going to be our cross section. So suppose I want to calculate the volume of this shape. What's the formula for calculating volume? It's Cross section, area of cross section multiplied by the height. So the area of this right angle triangle is going to be the area of cross section. And what exactly is the height going to be? Now remember, to be extra careful here. Height is always the perpendicular distance that you have across the two identical faces. So these faces, the two right angle triangles are the identical faces that we have. So what is the height going to be? The height is going to be the perpendicular distance across these two identical faces. Or in other words, AB is going to be my height. And it, we don't necessarily have to take this length. We can take any length, for example, and it is going to be the same since the perpendicular distance across these two faces is going to remain the same and which is why every prism is classified as a uniform solid. So let's look at another example. So suppose we have a trapezium based prism. Okay. So suppose I want to calculate the volume of this prism. So the first thing that I will do is I will first identify what the cross section is going to be. So the two identical faces that I can see are these two trapeziums, one at the uh, base and the other at the top. So this is going to be my cross section. And what is the height going to be? The height is going to be this length AB right here. So how will I figure out the volume of this prism? Area of cross section, which is going to be area of trapezium. And I hope you know how to calculate the area of trapezium. It is going to be one upon two into sum of parallel lengths into height. Now, when I say height, I mean height of the trapezium. Why? Because I'm still calculating the area of cross section. And let me show you what the height of the trapezium is going to be. It is going to be this length that you see, CD. Let me just join them with the help of a straight line. Yeah. So this CD is going to be the height of the trapezium and AB is going to be the height of the prism. So again, how will I calculate the volume? Area of trapezium, which is going to be 1 upon 2 into sum of parallel lengths. These two lengths are going to be my parallel lengths multiplied by height, that will give me the area of this trapezium. And then I will multiply it by the height, which is going to be the height of the prism. And what's the height again? It is going to be the perpendicular distance across the two identical faces. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Let's have a look at one more example. 
Okay, so now we have a scalene triangular prism. Now the reason why this is called a scalene triangle is because we have a scalene triangle at the top and we have a scalene triangle at the bottom. In other words, the cross section is going to be a scalene triangle. And I hope you guys know what a scalene triangle is. Scalene triangle is a triangle which has uh, three different lengths and three, and as a result, three different angles. Okay, so we will first begin by calculating the area of cross section for which I will have to calculate the area of this triangle that I'm highlighting for you. And then once I have the area of this triangle, this is going to be classified as the area of cross section. I will multiply it by the height, which is going to be a b. And as I said, you can take any two lengths since it's a uniform solid. The perpendicular distance throughout will remain the same. So I hope it's clear. Uh, I hope the concept of cross section and the concept of height is clear. Now in a lot of books and a lot of uh, notes you will see the, for the formula for uh, calculating the volume of prism is written as base area multiplied by height. Now that is essentially the same thing but uh, what base area means is this base and the height means refers to as the height of the prism. But I personally prefer the formula uh, area of cross section multiplied by height since uh, I feel it's, it's a lot more specific than base area. So anyway, I hope this is clear now. Now let's do a couple of example questions to further understand this concept. Okay, so now we're gonna, we, we have to find the volume of this prism. So the formula remains the same and that is area of cross section multiplied by the height. Cross section, as you know, are the two identical faces that you have at each end. So in this, in this shape, the cross section is going to be this face. One way to visualize this would be that what is the shape that you will get if you were to consistently slice this parallel to the face that we have in front. So the shape that we will obtain is the trapezium. And that trapezium is going to look something like this. So... Yeah, so this right here is going to be our cross section. And if, we, if I want to calculate the volume, so first I'll have to find out the area of cross section, which basically means I have to find out the area of this trapezium. And how do you find out the area of trapezium? I'm sure we're all familiar with that by now. So area of trapezium is equal to, this is what we're doing, finding out the area of cross section. Half into sum of parallel sides, the parallel lengths are 59 and 75. So 59 plus 75 multiplied by the the height of the prism, all right? I'm still finding, uh, height of the trapezium, sorry. I'm still finding out the area of cross section. So the height of the, uh, the height of the uh, trapezium here is going to be 46. So here we have, this we have done just to calculate the area of cross section. And then we're going to multiply it by the height. So this height right here is the height of the prism, not the height of the uh, trapezium. Instead, it's the height of the prism, which is what exactly? Which is the diff distance between the two identical faces. So here we can see we have an identical face and we will have the exact same face at the back also. So the perpendicular distance between these two identical faces is 120, which is going to be considered our height. So this formula right here, will give me the volume of this trapezium. So let's find out. So we have half multiplied by, so the volume will be 61,640 centimeter cube. Don't forget that the unit for volume is, 60, is centimeter cube. Okay, so let's do another example. Okay, so here we have another trapezium. Uh, okay, so here we have another trapezium whose area, we, whose volume we have to calculate. So again, we're going to first have to identify the cross section. The cross section is going to be the face that I've highlighted. So that means I'll first have to figure out the area of this, uh, of this shape. So this is, uh, actually we'll have to break this down into two shapes. One of them is going to be a rectangle and the other is going to be a trapezium. So if you look at the rectangle that's at the bottom, its dimensions is going to be 18 times 16. So remember, this is what we're doing. Right now, we're just calculating the area of cross section. So 18 times 16 is going to give me part of the area plus I'll have to add the area of the trapezium that's above it. So that means I'll need to find out what the height of the trapezium is that I can calculate by taking 28 and from it subtracting 16. So 28 minus 16 is going to give me, it should give me 12. Yeah, that's 12. And this length is going to be 18 also. So now let's find out the area of the trapezium. So that's going to be half into sum of parallel lengths which are going to be 18 and 7 multiplied by the height, which is going to be 12. All of this is going to give me just the area of cross section, which I will later on have to multiply by the height of the prism. 
So height of the prism is going to be 38, which, uh, and why is it going to be 38? You must know that height is the perpendicular distance between the two identical faces that we have at each end. So let's multiply this by 38. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna write this in my calculator as it is to see what the answer is. So the answer that I'm getting here is 116,644 centimeter cube. Okay, let's do another example. This example is slightly different, uh, slightly more technical than the ones that we have already done. So again, we will first have to figure out the area of cross section, which you can see is going to be this shape right here. And this is a weird looking shape, I know, but uh, we'll have to calculate its area first. So again, let's see how we can calculate this area. Uh, what we can do instead is that uh, let's first calculate the area of assuming that this is a complete rectangle let's first calculate it let's first calculate the area of this rectangle and this can be done by taking 16 and multiplying it by 9 so 16 times 9 will give me this all of this area and I have to subtract this little rectangle from the center well not center but yeah you know what I mean this region needs to be subtracted. So which means I'll need the dimensions of this rectangle. So I can see that one length is six. I'll have to calculate the length that I am highlighting in blue. And let's see how we can do that. Well, we can see that this is 16. Part of it is five and part of it is three. So five plus three is eight and 16 minus eight is going to give me eight. So that means this rectangle that we have here is going to be six. Uh, its dimensions are going to be six times eight. So I'm going to take six times eight and subtract it from the entire rectangle. So 16 times 9 is 144, 6 times 8 is 48. So let's see what 144 minus 48 is equal to. That's equal to 96. So this 96, remember, is the area of cross section. And this needs to be multiplied by the height of the prism. So height of the prism is going to be the perpendicular distance between the two identical faces, and that is going to be 10. So 96 times 10 is going to be equal to 960 centimeter cube. So this is how you can calculate the area of any prism. What you have to do is you have to take the area of cross section into consideration and then multiply it, multiply it by the height, which is simply the perpendicular distance between uh, the two identical faces or the perpendicular distance between the two cross sections.